this video, the second video is to look at some more properties of trig and, and look at it from an analytical point of view. And again, some of these concepts or properties, maybe you remember learning last year, uh, maybe forgot them, that's okay. Um, so we want to make sure everyone's on the same page um, you know, going through this video. So, so um, if there are examples that you can work ahead on, that's great. Otherwise, I'll go through all, all of them on the page. So the first one is um, this box that talks about even and odd identities or the properties of the trig functions. And just as a quick review, um, last semester we studied even and odd functions. And so in general, um, you know, even functions have two main, um, two main uh, properties that we need to remember. That when, um, when you graph them, um, the uh, even functions are going to have symmetry with the y-axis. So symmetry with the y-axis. And when you think of purely polynomial functions, um, the reason it's called even fun an even function is because even exponents exhibit this behavior. So if I said y equals x squared, that y equals x squared, it's a beautiful parabola, by the way, um, you know, that, that has symmetry over the y-axis. So that's part of the reason why an even function gets its name even because it's based in a polynomial fact that that's all going to be even exponents now there are other even functions that aren't polynomials like y equals absolute value of x and what we're about to find out shortly is cosine of x and secant of x so um, there's something about them that obviously has nothing to do with um, uh, even exponents, but yet they still are even functions. Um, the other property of um, even functions is that from an algebraic point of view, if you evaluate a negative x or an opposite of x, you will get the exact same um, output as if you evaluated f of x. Um, and so those are the two characteristics of even functions that, that, you, that we need to know. Um, odd functions, we can sort of pair them up uh, in a similar manner, um, that their symmetry is rotational. So it's symmetry with the origin. And that's a weird one to think about at first. It's a 180 degree rotational symmetry. Rotational uh, symmetry. And so, again, thinking from a purely um, uh, polynomial point of view, and you're just thinking about odd exponents, that's part of where it gets its name, odd functions. There's x, there's y. So if you took a graph, uh, that, oh, let's say y equals x cubed, something like that. So that is um, y equals x cubed. And if you took that graph and you spun it 180 degrees, Oh, well, that's not bad, actually. You get the exact same image, right? So there's that rotational symmetry. Um, but what we know, or we'll find out soon, that there are other functions that have nothing to do with exponents that could still be considered odd functions, like the sine of x function, which we'll learn about, and some of the other trig functions, um, like cosecant of x. Okay, so um, what's the corresponding algebra that goes along with an odd function? So we would evaluate negative x, just like we did in the even counterpart, but we would get the opposite of f of x. So, um, you know, kind of thinking about like this point right here as a positive x, positive y. If I go to its corresponding negative x, we'll get the opposite of that output. So in that case, it's negative y. Okay, general things that we should remember or need to know about even and odd functions. So then filling out our table, we kind of already um, got most of it. Um, so th the sine function is an odd function. So that if you see sine of opposite of theta, we could say that's the negative sine of theta. And um, if you think about sine in its unit circle view, remember we are always associating sine of theta with the y variable. And cosecant is the reciprocal of that y variable. So properties of sine and cosecant are go, going to go hand in hand. That this would also be negative cosecant of theta because it's an odd function. The other two odd functions, and, and then I'll highlight that in a second, the other two odd functions are tangent cotangent. So this is negative tangent of theta, and this would be negative cotangent of theta. 
So the, the um, sine and cosecant reciprocal pairing and the tangent and reciprocal of tangent cotangent pairing, those are both odd functions. So this is odd and this is odd. And then if you, you know, our previous one um, that we, I gave you some examples, these two are actually going to be even. So cosine is an even function, as is its reciprocal partner, secant. So if you evaluate negative theta, it's the same as if you evaluate theta. Same thing here. And those are both even functions. So uh, in polynomials, it's pretty rare um, that you get an even function or an odd function because you, all of the exponents have to you know, match. But it's kind of interesting to me that every single trig function is either even or odd. So, so um, the odd ones are highlighted in green, and then the even ones highlighted in blue. So we need to know that. Okay. So, and, and we'll see some of the graphical properties when we start graphing next week. So that leaves us, I think, just with um, some uh, reference angle problems to do here uh, on example five. So... Um, the the idea here is that we have to pretend we know nothing about trig um, and we're simply looking at some applications of reference angles so um I, I i should preference this given is really mathematically impossible um so so and what i mean by that is cosine of 20 is not 12 13 so i'm pretending uh I, i'm just using it as a value um, so, um, you know, if you know, you try to put that in your calculator, I, I agree, you're not getting exactly the 12 13s. I just want to use it to illustrate, um, you know, something that has really nice values. Because if you label a 12 13 triangle, 12 uh, 13 triangle as a cosine, again, we're pretending that that's a 20 degree angle. Let me get this a little bit bigger here, erase that. Um, you probably already, you know, are sharing my excitement of this triangle. Because if this is 12 and this is 13, this has to be 5, right? It's one of our Pythagorean triples. If you didn't remember that from honors geometry, you could always have used the Pythagorean theorem. So we're pretending that that's 20 degrees there for the sake of these problems. Okay, so there we go. So, um, but what I want to, what, what I want to use that is any triangle that might give us a reference angle of 20, um, we can use that information. Uh, and the same thing over here, the sine 100. Uh, sine 100 is not 4 fifths, but it, I'm just saying if you drew a 100 degree angle, here we go, that's 100 degrees. Remember, that's on the outside, which means its reference angle would be um, 80 degrees sitting here. 80. Um, and then, again, if I label that 4 fifths, just pretending, just for these problems, um, if I pretend that's four fifths, we get again yeah, another favorite Pythagorean triple, three, four, five. But make sure we make that negative three because we're to the left of the x-axis. So so I, I basically want to use this quote unquote given, even though we know it's not true. But let's uh, suppose it is. Let, let's see what happens if we do. So cosine of 340. Well, 340 is not one of our um, 30, 60, 90 or 45, 45, 90 triangles. Right. We draw this. We, we do not get one of those nice values. We get 20 degrees as its reference angle. But if we're using that 20 degrees based on this up here, right, then we could label that triangle as a 5, 12. Oh, I thought I changed the colors, my bad. Um, 5, 12, 13 triangle. But it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle in the fourth quadrant. So, of course, we need to make that 5 negative. Okay. I don't know if that's going to affect anything. Let's do the cosine. Cosine is adjacent um, over um, the hypotenuse, adjacent of hypotenuse, 12 13ths. Mm, didn't really affect um, our overall value being positive or negative. So we could just say it's 12 13ths. So that's kind of the goal for all of these problems. So, so if this is, oops, it looks like 13 13ths. Um, if this seems like super easy to you um, or maybe super familiar, then I would say go ahead and pause, um, finish all the problems on your own, and then go you know, check the answers in the video. Otherwise, we'll just work through all of them together. So the, again, the whole point of this is to draw reference angles. So I'm gonna draw 80 degrees. Again, emphasizing 80 degrees 
is not one of our nice, you know, 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles, but I can um, base it on a reference angle. That's 80. Well, that's sort of like this example over here, the second given. 80 degree according to that reference angle, that's a four, that's a five. The only difference is this is a three as a positive. Um, but it doesn't matter because cosecant is hypotenuse over um, the opposite. So that's going to be five fourths, which is fantastic. Okay, let's look at the next one. Cosecant of 280. So again, just the, going with the theme here, um, these reference angles aren't going to be, um, oops, sorry, uh, aren't going to be uh, the 30, 60, 90s or 45, 45, 90s. But let's go ahead and draw 280 degrees standard position. We go in a counterclockwise direction. Well, there's 270. So 280 is just 10 degrees past that south pole. All right, so here's our reference angle. Well, if we're 10 degrees there, that means we're 80 degrees sitting right there. We like that in these examples because we have our 80 degree reference triangle. Opposite 80, we said was four. This is a five. This is a three. The caveat is that that four is negative because we're below the x-axis. Okay, cosecant, hypotenuse over opposite, five to negative four. So we get negative five fourths. Okay, cosine of 40. Okay, so we, we draw 40 degrees. Oh, well, that's a horrible 40. Let's try that again. Um, we'll go to this color here. Just trying to change it up. That's probably equally as horrible. Sorry about that. So that's 40 degrees as a reference angle. So here's the problem. 40 degrees as a reference angle doesn't fit the two givens. We were given basically a 20 degree reference angle and an 80 degree reference angle. And and not 40. And even though mathematically 40 is 20 doubled and 40 is half of 80, right now I can't do anything. Um, even though if you are really savvy at trig, you know that there are some double and half angle formulas that are right around the corner. Um, but at this point, we can't do anything. Um, and I just kind of want to illustrate, maybe maybe you're thinking, oh, well, if you double 20, you get 40. So then, then you just double the value of the of the cosine? Uh, and the answer is no, <laughs> you don't. Um, because if that were true, um, that would have to work for all doubles. And I know for a fact that if I have 45 degrees, I know that the cosine of 45 degrees is root two over two. And if I if that hypothesis were true, and I say sine of 90 degrees, oh sorry, cosine of 90 degrees, which is doubling 45, cosine, of 90 degrees is exactly zero. Um, and so like that's not root two over two doubled. So so that's kind of um, silly. So um, so anyway, so what do we say? That's not possible. Not possible. Uh, we don't know how to do that one. And that's not meant to trick you. Um, it's meant to illustrate the, the relationship that when you double an angle, you don't double the sine value or the cosine value. Okay, so two more to go. Um, so, um, cosine of 100, so 100 degrees puts us over here, right? So there's a hundred degrees and that gives us 80 degree reference angle. Okay. That's something I can deal with. That's a four. That's a five. This time this has to be negative three cause I'm shifted to the, or, you know, I'm, I'm moving to the left three cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So negative three fifths. Okay, and then the last one, 290. Okay, so let's go to that nice purple color. So 290, so we're going 20 degrees past the South Pole, so to speak. So, so that's 70 degrees. And so you might think, wait a minute, Mr. Brown, um, the only references I have are 40, oh, sorry, are, are 80 and 20. Um, unless you look really careful, carefully, I should say, that if that's 70, then by just um, the, um, adding up to 180 degrees, then that's 20 degrees down there. In other words, our triangle has shifted. This 20 degrees um, is now in kind of like the opposite corner. And 70 degrees is now um, being created at the origin. So our triangle's flipped. So 70 has the side that's 12 opposite it, and five ha is the side that's opposite of 20 degrees. I hope I said that right. That sounded confusing in my head. Let's see. Opposite 20 is the 5. Opposite 70 is the 12. 
and there's your 13. So your triangle is basically flipped. Um, and then the 12 is negative. And again, I need to make sure I'm associating small aside, which is five opposite 20 degrees. Small aside, five opposite that 20 degrees. Fantastic. And I can do the tangent of this. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's negative 12 fifths. Okay. Now that actually, when you switch sort of like those kitty corner angles, um, well, you, uh, this is a little bit of, um, uh, you know, a kind of foreshadowing the next chapter or the next unit, like those two angles always add up to 90 degrees, right? They're complementary. And there's a property that we're going to look at next that deals with complementary angles and how does trig um, sort of a, like, how, how can we relate or find patterns when our angles are complementary? Okay. So I think um, based in the, or, you know, uh, after those two videos, I think we finished all of the examples, I think. Um, I don't know if to go back and look at the first video because I'm wondering, did I do this one or not? I think I did. Uh, I'll check. Okay. Um, uh, so, so hopefully that makes sense and, and you have a good start to um, begin the homework.